Hello people of the internet, my name is Rock Thomas and welcome back to another episode right now, right here on Pocho TV if you're joining us. Thank you so much for all this support guys. I don't have any other way to appreciate you but just to say thank you so much for this far. Right now we are at 204,000 subscribers guys and that's very amazing. There is this legend, uh, let me just call him a legend because he's one of the record holders that are few guys in the world. So uh, I think that really qualifies that guy to be called a legend. That was my favorite Maradona of all time besides Eliud Kipchoge, yeah. I'm talking about Kevin Kiptum, uh, may he actually rest in peace. Yeah, so uh, the Pasha team and uh, other members of the fourth estate across the world talk about CNN, talk about BBC, talk about DW, talk about Al Jazeera, talk about, F uh, I think, AFP, name them, all of them. All those uh, media houses were at hand to capture uh, the captivating scenarios because that guy was a world champion. He was an icon. And actually saying that he was an icon is understatement. That guy was a legend. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So um, I think I was kind of observant and uh, we have a couple of things that happened during his burial. That was in uh, Cherunya Farm, and uh, I followed the procession right from the start. By the way, uh, first of all, uh, we were blocked from entering that um, gate where the procession was being done. I think we spent a couple of um, hours at the gate because somebody um, really wants to see our ID cards. And that was like... Uh, are we not Kenyans actually? Because we are showing them uh, press cards and uh, they're really like, they want to see the ID cards. And uh, I was not alone. Uh, even the people from uh, Standard Group, people from Nation were blocked because they didn't have the ID cards. By the way, who carries ID cards nowadays? I think nowadays ID cards, um, you can just have a photo of it and present it. Anyway. And by the way, with a press card, you can even fly because airports are one of the, or among the zones um, which are very strict that you must show the ID. But once you have a press card, everything is intact. But I take no offense because at the end of the day, we were allowed to get in because there was somebody, there was a savior who came in and said, no, these guys, as long as they have the press cards, they have a license to enter um, and follow this procession because they are members of the fourth estate. Yeah, so uh, with me, I have around eight strange things that happened during the burial of Kevin Kiptum. And uh, without wasting time, one of them is the house. Oh, wow. I want to thank the government for doing that amazing job. The most strange part of it is that that house was completed in seven days. And I think the fact that the house was completed in seven days, it should be recorded in the Guinness Book of Records because it has never happened anywhere in this Kenya. Maybe, maybe in other countries like uh, the rest of Africa, but in Kenya it has never happened. A house, a modern house, or rather being completed in seven days. Yeah, so I think this is what united Kenyans. The government claims that that house cost seven million. And uh, many Kenyans are saying that most of the government projects are inflated, especially on papers. Yeah, so um, I just want you to tell me in the comment section below, how much do you think that house could cost? Because that house kind of... Uh, it metamorphosized, it was changing to A, to B, to C, and then finally the final product. At the beginning, people gave it names like Up Kibandaski, Kip Tombs General Shop. Even me, I wondered um, when the cardboards were being uh, surrounded all over the, the house. I was wondering, but I was really startled to see the final product. And uh, I concluded that never judge something before you see the final or end product. That was amazing. But guys, I just want to tell me, how much do you think that house could cost? Because pictures have been shared everywhere that that house 
uh, is now complete and it's so amazing. I'm going to be sharing some of the videos of that house because uh, we attended uh, the burial ceremony right from the procession until the end. Yeah, so we're going to be sharing the pictures If in, just in case you didn't see or you didn't find a chance to see those pictures. And then the second craziest thing that happened is about Ruto's bodyguards. Yeah, so um, I was among the lucky uh, cameraman uh, who was filming Ruto until when he and his bodyguards and the close um, uh, the closer uh, pol the close politicians, um, the high-ranked politicians in the government, uh, when they alighted from the cars, until when they went for the body viewing, and there was an instance where um, some bodyguards were so rough, and uh, and I saw the bodyguards manhandle. Uh, some of the members, um, some of the politicians, guys, I just don't want to mention the names, but they were so rough, yeah. They were manhandling even, they are forgetting, they are handling even the bosses. Uh, that was so rough of them, guys. Yeah, so uh, the next thing that happened uh, was um, when Ruto was giving his speech at the funeral, explaining how an icon Kiptum was, there was a strange woman who just came from nowhere and I heard, I could hear some neighbors of mine say that the board girls, the board girls will be sacked because that woman actually was approaching Ruto and um, you know the the, the, the hearsays from social media, some of them are saying that that must be uh, the mother-in-law to Keep to, that's what they're saying. They're saying because uh, we have had very many um, women who are coming out and saying that, oh, blah, 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 um, I have a son with Keep to. Very many controversial stories. So some people are saying, and I think that was just jokes, that uh, that could be one of the mother-in-laws. And uh, for me, I don't know. Tell me, guys, in the comment section uh, below, whom do you think that woman was? And uh, she was actually, she was courageous enough and brave. And she was actually going to shake Ruto's hand amidst the speech. Yeah. And the bodyguards really dragged her away like nothing. Because even Ruto said, wacheni, wacheni akai hapo. And uh, the bodyguards could not hear that. They came for her and just dragged her uh, away behind the tent. Yeah. Uh, I think the rest is history. I think we got a chance to have her on camera and explain to us what happened behind the tents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then the next thing that happened uh, is that um, we had very many at the this, uh, very many um, the, the colleagues of um, Tum, and uh, Kenyans who were really anticipating to see the legend uh, Eliud Kipchoge and. Uh, Sadly enough, or unluckily enough, um, he was nowhere to be seen. He could not attend that burial. And uh, I don't think maybe he has his own reasons. And uh, for me, I can guess that maybe it's because of the security, because we have had very many hearsays. I think cultures have different um, beliefs and um, norms. So um, we have had very many hearsays. Some of them are on the internet. Uh, people are saying that he could be having a hand um, in uh, making sure that uh, Kiptum is down, but those are their saying, those are just the hearsays. Uh, we at Pasha TV have not confirmed that, they're just hearsays which are around the social media platforms. Blogs are writing those stories everywhere, and uh, I don't really want to go deeper into that. Yeah, so um, the missing uh, the missing of Kipchoge to attend the burial ceremony of uh, Kiptum really disturbed the minds of very many Kenyans. Yeah, um, so I think they were expecting him to be around because um, the procession was moved to a kind of a central point and uh, at that particular point security was really beefed up so I think nothing could have happened to him when he, uh, if he could have come uh, to witness the procession of his colleague kept home. Maybe he has his own reasons so maybe we uh, get one day and uh, hear what he has to say about that. Then the next thing that happened during the burial of uh, Kiptum was about Ricky G. Now Ricky G would uh, never stop uh, making Kenyans laugh and amazing Kenyans coming with uh, unique styles day in, day out. If it's not speech, it's uh, 
kind of it's something else like dressing weirdly yeah so um i was among one of the lucky journalists to capture them right from the uh, from the cars when they are lighted uh, until when they arrived at the coffin for viewing for body viewing yeah so um my camera captured Ricky G <laughs> uh, when uh, I think he was in a state of reluctant, he was kind of reluctant to view the dead body until um, his bodyguard really pressed him to move near the coffin. I think it could have been a uh, drama if he could have missed to go and view the body. And uh, uh, a brave Kenyan has come up because I've been following this conversation on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok and everywhere. So there's this Kenyan who commented and said that um, uh, Kikuyus don't view dead bodies. I think it's their belief in the, uh, it makes sense to me. It makes sense. If the culture does not allow them, that's okay. So um, I think it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, so the next thing is, um, um, uh, the weird wind that uh, really blew uh, at Chepsamo and um, ensured that there is no procession at that venue. That was the planned place where the procession could take place. And um, immediately after erecting the tents and setting up everything, there was a strange wind which came and blew everything and also damaged some properties. I saw somebody's... Uh, very expensive car damaged. Yeah, uh, those tents were very heavy and uh, that wind could carry, uh, I think that was kind of uh, strange because how strong was that wind to carry those heavy tents? <laughs> and until uh, it really drops them away, scatters everything. Yeah, so again, Kenyans cannot stop, or Kenyans cannot lack what to say. Netizens say that uh, I think that is not just wind, maybe <laughs> there's some kind of forces. Yeah, so um, that procession uh, was moved to Chepkorio grounds, and that is where everything was done until uh, the body was carried to his home at Cherunya um, farm, where he was laid to rest. Yeah, so tell us in the comment section below, what do you think about that wind? What do you think? Because we have had very many comments um, explaining the same. People are saying, no, that is not uh, the normal wind that we know of. <laughs> I think uh, there could be some forces. Others are saying there could be the hand of man. I don't know, guys. That's what the comment section is saying. Yeah, so comment right down here below and tell us what the thing happened uh, during that time until the procession was moved to somewhere else. Uh, another thing is that um, there was a change of plan and that it, that one seemed to be so weird to me because the main reason that was given as to why there was a change of uh, plan on the burial day uh, was that um, His Excellency was traveling to Namibia. So the day was brought backwards. The, uh, earlier on it had been planned that Kiptum um, was to be laid to rest on 24th, that was to be on Saturday, and um, everywhere, all media platforms uh, marked that date and uh, wrote everywhere that the battle date um, could take place on 24th, only to realize later that it was carried backwards to 23rd. Yeah, so to me, that was kind of strange. Because of one person deciding on the burial death, one person who is not a family member. Now tell me, what do you think, guys? To me, it seemed to be it seemed to be so strange. So what's your feeling on that? The last thing that happened um, during um, Kiptum's burial that seemed to be strange uh, is that um, 24 hours after the burial of the late Kiptum Kevin, someone else who is in the same same industry of athletics passed on in Cameroon. Um, the athlete by the name Charles Kipsang passed on in Cameroon immediately after finishing his race. So guys, um, we have very many sources online uh, which are saying that um, um, he could have died from heart failure. 
Yeah, but um, it's kind of strange. The question that is lingering in the minds of Kenyans is why? Why is it that we are burying this one, this atleti? And uh, again, 24 hours later, another one passes on. So that's a question that is really disturbing Kenyans. Uh, and also we had some prayers. All at least gathered, bent down to their knees in front of the procession grounds. And uh, they were prayed for. And uh, I clearly remember the pastor condemning and praying uh, against uh, premature deaths. Yeah, so um, that is something that is very strange. And we are still following on this issue uh, until when we find some um, tangible um, explanations on the same. So guys, that has been it for today. Uh, if you're watching this video up to this particular point, thank you so much. And don't forget to click the subscribe button right uh, down here. And also turn on the notification bell icon to ensure that you get notified. Once you upload something uh, new like this one, guys, remember to follow me on Instagram at zad underscore ke see you on the next one bye bye